Sorry, one existence. Sure. Uh, hi, my name is Eugene Nedov, and I uh, work this year at the Risk Center as a researcher, and also I work at uh, FNA, Financial Network Analytics. It's a startup company that explores network effects and uh, in different areas such as correlations and uh, payments and uh, other areas. So I will illustrate now how we can use this system as an early warning system for different uh, scenarios that my colleagues discussed before. Um, and uh, let me just take us through it. So uh, the main point is that uh, we know that we go through financial crisis and, uh, crisis, uh, and uh, the preparedness for financial crises uh, is key. Um, so if you, if you can analyze the impacts and you can know uh, in advance uh, what's coming up, then uh, you can position yourself uh, appropriately. So we'll explore some uh, leading indicators and uh, how by balancing your portfolio in the right way and uh, staying away from certain asset classes, uh, you can uh, dampen the impact and position yourself. Okay, so these are the four scenarios that uh, we've talked about, the global property crash, the Eurozone meltdown, high inflation world, and dollar default. And uh, uh, the system of leading indicators that uh, we've developed uh, applies to all of these four scenarios and gives you uh, between uh, sometimes a quarter to a year early warning, uh, sometimes three quarters to a year early warning. Um, okay, so uh, the case study that I'll focus on is the asset bubble in uh, properties, in particular the U.S. asset bubble in 2008. And um, we will uh, pick some indicators in building construction and see how this provides us a warning about uh, three to four quarters ahead of the actual event. So I mentioned uh, FNA, that's the tool uh, I'll be using. And uh, uh, we will uh, go through different phases of uh, housing crisis, uh, where it starts with bubble emergence and then goes through tapering, bust, goes into bottoming, and then possibly re-emergence uh, currently. So there are a lot of news, obviously, about uh, different fears of uh, housing market crashes in China and in Brazil and uh, Indonesia, etc. So we think about it all the time. And if we look at the um, indicators such as house price to income ratio or house price to rental ratio and map different countries on it, uh, we can see that there is uh, quite a lot of countries in the bubble, especially the ones uh, you see at the right uh, top corner, China, uh, Brazil, and uh, somewhat lower UK. So uh, let's go through this most recent famous case study, which also happened to bring the whole financial system down uh, with itself. And uh, I will look at the indicators, uh, building permits, uh, homes started, homes completed, new houses for sale, home price index, and home loans. Uh, so this is the timeline of the crisis. In 2005, uh, we see some foreclosures starting. 2006, uh, there is a slowdown, and construction index is down 40%. 2007, uh, the prices start falling, new century files for bankruptcy. 2008, is where it really uh, all accumulates, and there is a sharp fall in the equity index in the US. Uh, Bear Stearns and Lehman uh, uh, go out of business, and uh, by 2009, the situation is so bad that the government has to go into the program to save uh, things. So this is our timeline, and uh, the crash is uh, about the end of 2008 and 9, the shock is sort of the shock that uh, shocked everything and uh, caused the meltdown in the financial system. Uh, where is, these are the phases of uh, the, the housing bubble underneath. And uh, in between, you can see some signals that I'll explain in detail now, uh, where we see this movement starting already in the beginning of 2006. 
so just a couple of words, what this is. Uh, we map correlation structures in FNA using uh, a concept called minimal sane tree, which reduces information uh, in correlation systems and just shows uh, the skeleton of the, the most important connections. So the assets here, uh, this, uh, in this display, these are house prices and this is by state in the United States. Uh, and uh, the links, uh, the length is proportional to the correlation. So the closer, the stronger is the correlation. And uh, things that are in the middle are so-called systemic risk. Uh, things that are in the periphery are less important and give them the system less. And we also looked at the uh, outliers from the normal distribution of returns. And uh, this uh, dark green dots, it means that they are way out of the normal distribution prediction with 95% confidence. Uh, so 2003, we see this bubble emerging and uh, lots of outliers in green. So there is growth in home prices in the States and uh, they cluster in some particular areas as you can see. Then uh, 2004, it gets even stronger. Now you see this is across the entire system, uh, even faster growth, more outliers. And now going uh, to the states where you usually don't see so much constructions like Nevada, etc. So this is the whole tree is infected, if you want, with, with the successive growth at that point. Uh, now, in 2006, uh, we see a reversal of the situation. And now we look at the construction indicators that I mentioned the building started and building permits. <coughs> And you see it's all in red. So in red, it means that it's a negative growth now. It's also an outlier. And uh, uh, there is quite a few of them. And they are uh, in building permits in pretty big part of the system here. Uh, so this is a bit more detailed. The building permits uh, sharply go down in Q1 of 2006 with really large outliers. Uh, now, if we project that picture uh, through the entire timeline, we see that also quite clearly this is the 95% confidence band. This is where it kind of falls off the wagon in 2006, and it stays underneath it for quite some time. And then the system goes into this increased volatility state. Uh, it's a regime change, essentially. So uh, the correlation network itself uh, it is uh, starting to grow tighter, and uh, systemic risk is on increase. Then uh, 2007, it just persists, and so it gives you a confirmation of the warning. Uh, there are outliers now in homes completed, and uh, the downward move continues. So you see the consistency of the signal. Um, and uh, now we come to the bust point, which is uh, 2008, where uh, the systemic risk now increased quite a bit. You see from 20%, it's 38 now. And the, the length of the tree, which measures how tightly things are correlated, is uh, from nine down to seven. Uh, and you can see this R survival shows you the structural changes in correlation system. It's also an increase, so the, the system is changing quite a lot. Uh, and then the bottoming is 2009. That's really where everything just uh, uh, plummeted. And uh, you see all these negative outliers and the cost price indices across the states. And the network is really compressed now. It's, it's all behaving uh, as a one factor. Uh, so um, we, we can see, OK, I think this is uh, just a more the same point here. Uh, but the, the bottom line is uh, that studying the correlation structure uh, without you looking at anything else, it just signals changes uh, quite a bit ahead of the actual sharp fall. So you have a warning, in this case, uh, over a year uh, before the um, uh, cr critical event takes place. So if you monitor how the correlation is growing or contracting and the outliers in it and, and how it spreads out, So the same system uh, will also apply to the Eurozone debt crisis. 
where we took uh, some uh, major government bonds and uh, they are the assets here and these are the correlations between government bonds and uh, I'll just briefly say that in 2004, 2005 all the Euro European sovereign bonds uh, are clustered together so you can see it's a very tight cluster, very correlated and uh, the outliers are all showing up, it's uh, the bonds are appreciating in value Whereas by 2009, before the system kind of exploded in 2010, uh, but in 2009 you see how the structure changes very stretched out. Uh, there is clear periphery branch with Greece on the outside of it, and uh, Italy, uh, Portugal, and Spain in there, and then the Central and Northern European countries uh, are on the other side of the spectrum, and this is quite a bit ahead of, of the actual. Uh, spread divergence. And then uh, uh, the same system I was trying for the Americanization, but you see the rise of Remimbi, and uh, this picture shows how the crisis in US in uh, 2009, where US uh, started having this negative uh, trade balances and uh, uh, decreased investment. Uh, so that decrease translated into increase in deposits in Remindi and cross-board uh, trades in Remindi. So it went uh, towards uh, Chinese economy at the time. Uh, and the last one is on inflation. Uh, so we're trying to monitor inflation. The most recent fear of the outbreak of inflation was in uh, 2008 when there was this commodity boom for some time. And uh, you can see that at the time uh, there is a boom in oil and food prices and there is a sharp decrease in consumer confidence. Uh, and so we also in included velocity of circulation as one of the indicators, uh, home prices, imports, monetary base. So that's potentially a set of indicators to monitor and just see how the uh, correlations between them change and evolve with time and the outliers and their distribution to see if uh, something else is uh, coming up. Um, okay. Um, I think that's it, okay. Yeah, so now if you have questions, uh, feel free to ask. 